Welcome to another episode of Dr. Simone Says. My name is Simone Eastman Yuan. I am a medical doctor with sickle cell disorder. I am also the best-selling author of the books All Rise, The Sickle Cell Community vs. the Medical Establishment, and A Doctor in a Patient's Body, Dreaming Big with Sickle Cell Disease and Chronic Pain. These days, I like to spend my time making sure that every sickle cell survivor becomes a sickle cell thriver because it matters that we live well. Yeah, every other. Hello everyone, yeah. it's Dr. Simone here. And I wanted to take some time to just connect with you guys and see how everybody's doing. I know there's a lot of buzz in the air and yet things can be eerily silent during this whole coronavirus pandemic. <clears throat> and for us as um, the sickle cell community, um, you know, in many ways, it's not much difference in terms of preparation and um, precaution. Um, it's not much different than what we do almost every winter. I know for me, I am on uh, portable oxygen. And so every winter, which means, you know, I have compromised lungs and um, and uh, every winter I have to take, you know, uh, drastic precautions uh, because my doctors are always concerned that I get, you know, another respiratory infection that would further compromise um, the pulmonary fibrosis that I already have. And, um, and so um, I have to, you know, wear a mask during the flu season. I... Um, you know, I, I go to church and, and go to my doctor's appointments uh, masked. Um, and outside of that, I don't do a whole lot um, more than I absolutely need to because I am keenly aware of the fact that anything respiratory can then lead to, you know, something like acute chest. And, you know, for us, acute chest syndrome is the leading cause of death for a sickle cell. And so I don't know that, um, you know, that uh, I am uh, any more cautious than I've already had to be. But I know that some of you haven't had to have that heightened awareness. And so it may be causing some anxiety. And, you know, if that anxiety leads you to be more cautious and more aware and, you um, and uh, more compliant with what you ha what you have to do, I'm all for that. I just don't think it should go over into panic. Um, you know, fear is something that can give way to a lot of things, and it can affect your health adversely as well. So, um, the last thing we want is for you to have such emotional discomfort that it's actually triggering your sickle cell because it's um, an emotional stress, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> instead, I'd like for us to think about, you know, some things that we um, might want to review. Now, I know you've heard a lot of things already about washing your hands and all of that. So I won't go over the obvious, I think. Um, what I want to address are some things that might be specific to our community and um, I've stayed away from you know making any um, um, informative videos because I am not an authority on this virus and uh, things are changing all the time like initially I was told that um, um, the predominant presentation for coronavirus was a dry cough and a fever and um, and so if you had a runny nose or if you had um, mucus production like a productive cough um, that that was not coronavirus that that was likely um, a cold or another virus and since then I actually have um, read from the list at uh, the World Health Organization that 30% I want to say maybe it was 27 
uh, something close to 30% of people actually had a productive cough. So I was very confused because I had already stepped out and told people, listen, if you have a runny nose or, um, or um, a productive cough, um, it's not the coronavirus. And so the facts are um, not all in. And so I don't want to sound like an authority on something that I'm, uh, uh, I'm no expert in. Um, by the way, I am um, in the infusion center getting uh, treatment. So if you hear a lot of buzz around, um, that's what's going on. Um, so uh, I wanted to talk about a few things regarding the coronavirus. So I, I've heard that a lot of the young adults are not as compliant as they need to be. And as such, um, people are getting, there's a higher rate of infection now in the young adult population. There was an article that came out in France that talked about um, young adults actually having to be um, on a respirator um, because of um, also once they get the virus they're trying to you know um, self-medicate at home and um, they are using um, aspirin and ibuprofen and apparently that's aggravating the virus and so um, they have had um, like a worse uh, case because of that and so here we are thinking that you know okay most young adults are um, you know much lower risk but there are things that can cause you to be at a higher risk one of course if you don't self quarantine or monitor yourself the way um, the way it, that the World Health, Health Organization is um, suggesting or, or or ordering us to and uh, and now because people haven't done that now the military has had to be brought in to enforce that law like to enforce uh, that um, um, mandate that you know people need to not be just wandering the streets or congregating um, unnecessarily because it can actually cause the virus to you know spread if you have a group if a crowd is gonna and one person is infected it will spread through that crowd understandably so also as a young person you can then take it to an adult that's immune compromised so um for our sickle cell community please uh if you are younger just because you're hearing that it's it seems to be uh, affecting mostly a, the elderly population please don't use that as a license to um, continue life as usual it is not life as usual I don't want you to panic but you do have to be on high alert um, some of the things that I would like to talk about are um, uh, what to do for yourself in terms of access to care because obviously it's not ideal for you to go into a health center, a hospital, none of that. Um, but you will continue to need care. So I would suggest calling your insurance and finding out if you could then get um, a um, case manager uh, to organize whatever you would need um, at home as much as possible. So for me during the winter, I tend to organize having IV fluids at home and um, any lab work that is going to be drawn because it's also cold outside and I don't want to trigger a crisis and I end up in the hospital. So um, you can do that. You can call and ask for that to happen and ask what your doctor would need to do to get that plan, what, what orders they would need to write and submit so that you can get the things you need at home and um, I would say that that's a much better plan than going and sitting in the waiting room of uh, a clinic uh, for something that could be done um, at home people can actually come and get your blood a phlebotomist a nurse a home health nurse can come and draw your blood at home if you needed blood work done um, an IV could be set up at home 
Um, but don't forget, if people are coming into your home, I mean, it's better than going out and being exposed to a lot of people. But if someone is coming to your home, please protect yourself from that person as well. I know people are talking about you don't need to wear a mask. I think it's still a good idea to wear a mask because um, you are protecting yourself in a way from touching your nose and your mouth. And... Um, and uh, so I, if, if someone comes into my home, that's what I'm doing. Now, the World Health Organization has not said that. The CDC has not sanctioned that. I just believe that it's common sense that if they are a um, healthcare provider, they've probably been around a lot of sick people, and now they're coming to my house. So I am going to protect myself. Um, appropriately and when they leave I'm going to spray down my place with Lysol and any surface that they've touched when they come I'm going to restrict where they sit so that they're not all over my house and um, and I would encourage you to do the same um, so um, those are some of the things that I would like you know you to take into consideration and then, you know, last but not least, you know, I have heard of people um, who have come down with the virus and it makes everybody like passes around the video and makes it seem like, you know, like they're a criminal for getting the virus. Listen, someone gave them or passed on the virus. They didn't make the virus. They didn't self inoculate. They were unfortunate and got the virus if they do please if anybody in our in our community in our sickle cell community or outside of the community please be mature about it please be kind and you know even from a distance whatever you can do to help let's try to actually maximize this time this is a time where everybody's home and kind of still um, disabled in a way um, from their normal physical activity in a way that we normally are because we're disabled by our health so in a way the playing field has been leveled somewhat where people are not able to go out and do all the things that they normally do just like we haven't been able to but this is a time that we can use to shine we can actually think of something that we can do on a daily basis to encourage people maybe even telling a joke if you tell a joke a day believe it or not it will help your health as well because it will calm you down and um, and it will encourage someone else you know who might be stressed out because of you know everything we're hearing on the TV and and everything that we hear in every news that we open regarding the coronavirus so um, you can actually help by um, by setting a better environment setting a better tone for the environment um, praying with people where you can uh, reaching out through uh, FaceTime and um, live stream and anything else that will be able to connect people uh, in a way that will help them to reduce the anxiety they might be feeling so hopefully this was helpful and um, you know I am I post on my Facebook uh, page whatever new information I see from the CDC or the World Health Organization but like I said sometimes things are changing and I don't want to say anything that might be incorrect I just know that for us especially with our lungs being you know an area of compromise often and especially you know with us already being at risk for things like acute chest syndrome we do have to be cautious to make sure that we don't get you know a bilateral pneumonia which is essentially what you you know what you would get is a bilateral pneumonia and it is not um you know it is it is not something that you can't you know do your best to avoid so go ahead and do that and then the rest you leave up to 
your higher power okay um i hope that this was helpful and you guys you're my family i am praying for you all and um i hope that we all can just um, make the best out of this time with our friends and families okay take good care until next time this is dr simone says and remember you are a sickle cell thriver and not just a survivor if you benefited from this episode any at all please like on the video subscribe to the channel and share the video with one other person as your good deed towards the sickle cell cause have a great day if you would like to contact me to speak in your area please don't hesitate to email me at dr simone says at gmail.com if you are the one referring me Please let me know so that I could send you a nice thank you surprise.